Good afternoon. Today is November 8th, 2012. The election is over. So now what? More than anything, Obama is facing a very new urgent task. Uh, he's in a second term that is working with the status quo Congress to address an impending financial crisis that economists say could plunge our country into a further recession if it does not get resolved. You made your voice heard, Obama was had said in his acceptance speech. And I believe he was signaling that he, he truly believes that the country is behind all of his policies. And this is going to be a sticking point that the Republicans are sure to uh, definitely discredit as being fact. Now, what's most important to me is that Obama's reelection means that his signature health care overhaul plan is going to endure, as will the Wall Street overhaul enacted after the economic meltdown. The drawdown of troops in Afghanistan will continue apace, and with an aging roster of justices, uh, the president will probably have to make an, uh, at least one more nomination to uh, the Supreme Court. Now, President Obama's re-election <coughs> ensures the survival of his Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. But it doesn't mean that this law stays without any uh, particular challenges. Um, Republican challenger Mitt Romney had vowed to fully repeal the law if elected, calling it a costly government expansion through massive law and was partly based on the health care reform in Massachusetts. Uh, President Obama's re-election provides American employers with referendum to fully begin implementing the Affordable Care Act. In this is a statement that was made by the International Foundation of Employee Benefit Plans, uh, the CEO Michael Wilson. Uh, even after the summer Supreme Court ruling, many of our members are, were still awaiting the outcome of this general election before they addressed the health care reform. Now, personally, I experienced this with a lot of the employer groups that we spoke with during the second and third quarter of 2012. And it was especially true with a lot of people that we were speaking to throughout October. Many groups that I spoke with said, just wait till the election, Steve. Give me a call after that, and we'll figure out what we're, where we're going to go. The decision last uh, on Tuesday night cements that it was full steam ahead for the massive and long panned out law, and it does not mean it will be an easy road ahead for anybody. Uh, the majority of Americans are still very unsure of their feelings on the law and what it really means for them, and a lot of experts believe that the administration has not done a very good job of really explaining it. I mean, this is a 2,700-page law that most of the Congress didn't read before they signed off and, and put it on the president's desk to enact it into law. Now, the biggest implementations haven't even gone into effect yet. There are a couple of dozen lawsuits to, that seek to overturn the contraceptive uh, mandate, which requires church-affiliated institutions to cover birth control for all of their employees, something that it goes against their morals and their religious beliefs. Uh, the states also pose threats to the laws as well. Uh, state officials have considerable uh, sway over how this law is going to be carried out after the Supreme Court gave them the power to reject the expansion of Medicaid. That's a very important fact uh, as a part of this law. There are uh, battling uh, the federal government over the law's new insurance exchanges. Uh, the, the states are due to give the government uh, their plan detailing how they will roll out their exchange in just a matter of days. As a matter of fact, the deadline is November 17th, and less of them, uh, less than half of these states have even begun to set up any exchanges or even have agreed to do so. And the law states that if the federal, that the federal government is going to come in and set up these exchanges if the states have not. Now, personally here in Oklahoma, uh, I've heard Mary Fallon in person state that uh, we're not going to set up an exchange. The state of Oklahoma has a lawsuit against the federal government because of, of a provision in our state constitution that says we, we cannot forcibly uh, uh, through law, forcibly uh, mandate that anybody purchase any goods or services, which includes insurance services. Um, there's a lot of unresolved issues as well. Uh, even though that the health industry as a whole congratulate Obama on his victory, they say the cost within the healthcare industry is still a very large and unresolved issue. Um, as the health care reform law gets implemented, policymakers have to prioritize affordability for consumers and employers. Uh, the nation has to address the soaring cost of medical care that's driving up the cost of coverage. And that's taking up a greater share of the federal and state budgets as a part of what we're doing. And it's also threatening the long-term solvency of our nation's public safety net programs as well. Now, it's important to notate that the, the PPACA, which is PPACA, or the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, addresses only one of the three broad issues 
and that's going to be access. Um, now, both employers and the government will need a lot more time to address the two other key issues, and that's cost and the quality of care that's going to be provided. But now that the law is here to stay, businesses have no other choice but to work with the president on the law's requirements and how to get those fully implemented. Now, it was released this morning from uh, Health and Human Services that are expected to provide rules on exchanges. Um, President Barack Obama's victory on Tuesday night has ensured that the continued implementation of the Affordable Care Act has also added pressure on the administration to offer health care interest groups more clarity on several provisions of the landmark 2010 bill. Uh, many of the industry uh, expect that the administration are going to release a wave of new policies and regulations very, very quickly, especially as the states have just until the end of next week to decide if they're going to put in those their exchanges. So given this immediacy uh, and, and, and the uh, relevancy of this problem, uh, we expect that we're going to get information on exchanges first. And then next, uh, to be issued uh, is going to be rules on the essential health benefits and guidance for employers about what constitutes a part-time, what constitutes a full-time employee, and what kind of penalties will the employers face for not offering the appropriate coverages to their workers. Now, personally, I think that... Um, I think the best thing that came from last night is that the, clar the clarity of the Affordable Care Act is going to be implemented. It is no longer an excuse to say, well, let's wait and see what happens with the election. It's time to get serious, uh, and it's time to get serious on the business of helping employers with what is looming and what is about to come. Now, just as the Supreme Court has uh, a ruling that has verified that it is constitutional for the Affordable Care Act, it wasn't the end of the world, and neither is Obama being reelected. Uh, for, for insurance agencies and brokers, their agencies didn't close overnight. Uh, all the clients are not gone. The business didn't stop the moment that the 271st electoral vote, uh, you know, electoral college vote was actually verified. Um, the answer to all of these questions is no, this, this stuff didn't happen. And no matter what happens, that was yesterday, this is today, and it's time to move forward. Employers must need have a, a large need, employers must get help being navigated through all of these changes with the Affordable Care Act. And it's really, like ourselves, a broker's opportunity to, and our responsibility to be that trusted advisor. Employers have to be educated on what is in the Affordable Care Act and how it affects them. And brokers have to implement new benefits technologies for their offices and for their employees. And they have to explore new products such as voluntary benefits, or they should go ahead and plan on exiting the business now. Uh, once the law was passed in 2010, many brokers decided it was already time to get out. They weren't up for the battle. Now, here at the Wilson Insurance Group, it's a little bit different. We've been prepared for this. We've had solutions that we've put in place currently and that we will continue to put in place. Uh, for groups of, of you know employees, maybe t in the size of 10 or more employees, we have significant impact. Uh, we've worked with businesses with as small as 10 employees and saved them 10, 12, 14 thousand dollars a year. Uh, for groups with 30, 35 employees, this is really interesting. Just last week, I worked with a group, of, and because of the cost-sharing model that they have in their business, I was able to save the employees, give them a raise that the employer didn't have to pay for, fifty-seven thousand dollars over a 12-month period. Now, in that same token, since the cost-sharing model hadn't changed, I developed a system for the employer to actually get some cash back on their major medical health plan, uh, utilizing uh, uh, some self-funded nature A-type modeling for them, and I will give them back somewhere between $12,000 to $45,000 a year of health premiums based on their claims experience. And this is available to any small business with 10 or more employees, and this is what I want to do for you. So I urge you. Uh, follow us on uh, uh, on Twitter, which is at We Insure OKC. Um, uh, like us on our Facebook page, the Wilson Insurance Group on Facebook. C come in and check out our blog. Uh, we do our best to try and keep that updated on the front page of our website, which is uh, uh, the Wilson Insurance Group is at We Insure OKC dot com. We Insure OKC dot com. Give us a call. 405-285-5555. We do not only do business in the state of Oklahoma, but many other states as well. And even if you call us from a state where we're not licensed, if we can help you, then we'll take care of the licensing just to help you. We do business in Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, Missouri, Iowa, South Carolina, and Virginia currently, and I'd love to help you as well.
Again, I'm Steve Wilson with the Wilson Insurance Group, and this is a, a quick rundown of what happened with the um, uh, uh, with the elections and what that means today. But what I want to let you know is I'm here to help you. Give us a call today.